uh, call this hearing to order. So hearing on the Vision Zero plan. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this public hearing of the Public Service and Transportation Committee to order. Tonight's hearing will focus on the Vision Zero Action Plan. Amir Parks, Lily Reed, Elizabeth Robinson Rutland. Those are just three individuals who've been killed in our city due to crashes. All of them were children. More than 50 people die each year because of transportation related crashes. Vision Zero Columbus is focused on ending crash related fatalities and serious injuries in our streets while increasing safe, healthy and equitable mobility for all. Tonight, we'll hear from the Department of Public Service, the external speakers who support this effort, as well as members of the public. So without further delay, I'd like to turn the floor over to Mandy Bishop and Maria Cantrell from the Department of Public Service for a short presentation on the plan. The floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. And, and thank you for um, highlighting why we're really doing this. Um, Vision Zero is such an important shift in our thinking um, it's protecting, it's thinking about protecting lives uh, as a priority above all of other objectives in our transportation system. And so, you know, those, those three names, those three people are the reason that we're doing this today. So thank you. Maria, if you yep. pull up the slide. Angela, deck. can you let me, Angela, can you let me share uh, our presentation? Absolutely. There we go. Okay. Okay, we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Vision Zero is gaining momentum all across the country. You can see that Columbus is not alone. We're not the first, and we had a lot of great peer cities to learn from. Um, Cincinnati and Cleveland have also announced their intent to become Vision Zero cities. So we're in great company. Um, one of the things that Maria shared with me that she was asked more than a year ago when Vision Zero was launched by the mayor and the director was, um, why now? And that's because uh, fatal and serious injury crashes are on the rise. And listening to Secretary Transportation, Transportation Secretary Buttigieg, um, Vision Zero programs may become future requirements for eligibility for other federal funding. Um, protecting lives overall uh, other objectives may become the norm and not the exception in our system. As you can see, the trend is not great. We're seeing an alarming trend in, upward, in an upward manner of more people dying every year. Uh, in 2019, we lost 54 people. In 2020, um, we're trending towards 60 lives lost. So it's a trend that we have to really address um, with a vision zero mindset. So let me share a few items that will help articulate the shift in what what the shift in mindset really means. And so our shift in mindset has to be that the worst crashes can be prevented. We have the ability to influence safe conditions, systems, and behavior. As exhibited in the growing movement to replace the term traffic accident with crash, Vision Zero acknowledges that these tragedies are preventable and the choices we make, particularly at the policy level and related to the built environment, have far greater impacts than we traditionally accepted. Protecting human life is the priority of our transportation system. All people deserve to be safe as they move about their communities, whether walking, bicycling, driving, or taking transit regardless of age, race, ability, or background. The perceived benefit of speed and mobility are secondary to the primary goal of safety and public health. We have to acknowledge that sometimes humans are fallible and at times we're gonna make poor choices that result in crashes. While still important, an important part of our effort, no amount of education, enforcement, or technolo technological advancement um, will entirely eliminate human error. So, at such Envision Zero, we really have to hold that we should design the transportation system based on expecting that human error will occur um, so that the outcome of those mistakes are much less severe. 
We're not trying to prevent all crashes, but we're trying to prevent the severity in those crashes. We also have to recognize that um, Vision Zero calls for a shift in attention away from expecting people to behave perfectly towards a shift um, to an upstream approach that shapes policies, systems, and the built environment. These are all key factors that most, uh, most affect people's behavioral choices. This does not mean that individuals are not responsible for their own behavior. Um, but instead, it shifts the focus to higher level systems and policies that have greater impact than trying to influence billions of individual choices. Policies and design should definitely um, encourage the desired behaviors uh, by making them intuitive, rational, and easy to follow. And the number one thing we really have to think about, the, the system we just talked about focusing on needs to be changed to slow cars down. As we know, the greater the speed, the greater the likelihood of a crash occurring, as well as the greater likelihood that the crash is severe. So by reducing speeds, when people do make those mistakes, uh, the severity of the outcome is definitely reduced. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Maria to talk about our timeline and more about the plan. Thanks so much, Fandy. So with Vision Zero, we started this initiative over a year ago in winter of 2019 and 2020. We did a lot of background and preparation on data. We created a website and we did research to learn you know, what some of our predecessors in Vision Zero did and to learn from their successes. Um, we shared this information with our partners and our stakeholders to get buy-in and involvement from our community. Then in the spring of 2020, right around a year ago, um, Mayor Ginther and Council President Hardin held a, a media event to announce Vision Zero. Um, you know, timing is what it was. We know what happened with COVID. It, it happened to be the same day that uh, Governor DeWine announced that um, people would be going to, um, not going to school for a while. And so, you know, that's the cards we were dealt with, but we knew we still wanted to push forward with this initiative nonetheless. So in later in the spring and in the summer, we convened an executive committee and some working groups to sort of collaborate on, you know, what we wanna do for an action plan. And then in the fall, we kind of gathered all that information from many, many meetings. I'll talk a little bit more about them uh, here in the presentation, but we we put our action plan together. We drafted it, we finalized it over the winter time, and you know here we are now sharing our um, plan with you. We just published it on our, on our website this week. Um, but you know that's just the beginning. This is our document. We're going to start over the next two years to implement a lot of strategies and foundational activities. So who is involved? Who's our executive committee? Um, here's a list of folks that participated. Some of them are here with us today. Uh, we were spearheaded by the Director of Public Service, Jennifer Gallagher. We had involvement from the Mayor's Office with Stephen Sayer. Uh, Council Member Shayla Favor from City Council participated. We had um, Lieutenant Weiner from Police, uh, Assistant Chief David Baugh from the Fire Department, um, also Pat Ferguson from the Fire Department, Dr. Roberts from the Health, um, our Health Commissioner, uh, Director Carla Williams Scott from our Department of Neighborhoods, and those were just internal to the city. But then beyond that, you know, we had our partners at um, Columbus City Schools. We had Dr. Dixon. We um, worked with Joanna Pinkerton of CODA, William Murdoch, who's here today from Morpsey, Michelle May, who's here today from CODA, as well as our um, stakeholders with um, Todd Wickerham of Ohio Health. Nathan Weimer and Toby Tomlin of Nationwide and David Harrison, president of Columbus State. So, you know, we have a lot of people who are involved in our community that really guided us through this um, process. And then our working groups comprised of city staff, advocates, stakeholders, consultants, designers, area commission members, and residents. Our full list of those who is involved or the agencies involved are acknowledged at the end of our action plan. But we got these folks together for many meetings over the summer months, like dozens of meetings. We learned from each other about ongoing initiatives um, so we could share information about what, it, what efforts were already going on. So we weren't reinventing the wheel and where could we build upon um, successful programs. We also discussed concerns. We reviewed lots of data, the who, what, when, where, why, and how these crashes were happening. And we brainstormed 
lots of potential solutions. I think, you know, we had hundreds of ideas of things we wanted to do. And, you know, that sort of developed the, the strategies of our action plan. These working groups also collaborated on mission statements for these four areas. Safe people was about vulnerable transportation users. Those are bicyclists, pedestrians, transit users, and motorcyclists of every age, ability, and income. We want to make sure they can travel through Columbus safely and comfortably. And we also focused on safe streets. We want to make sure that the city of Columbus will pursue action that will slow speeds of motor vehicles to protect all road users. And safe vehicles uh, pertains to, you know, the way our streets are built. Columbus streets must be designed and built to eliminate fatal and serious injury crashes and promote safe mobility for all users. Um, and finally, safe speeds. All vehicles must be equipped, operated, and maintained to prioritize the safety for all road users. We couldn't have done this without involving our community, and we, we did quite a bit to in, with our communications and outreach. Um, we leveraged virtual presentations because, hey, it was COVID and we couldn't go out um, to do a ton of boots on the street. Um, so we had several virtual town halls, public meetings, and other small group events. We used paid social media, even Mayor Ginther uh, recorded a Vision Zero promotion and complete, to complete our public survey. Ohio Health featured a Vision Zero medical minute uh, that they distributed to their um, email distribution list. And uh, MORPC dedicated a newsletter uh, to Vision Zero. More must be done as we continue our Vision Zero outreach in the future. We did manage to go out to um, some of our busiest CODA stops to help um, complete our survey so we could reach a few more people when we were allowed to, depending on the level of, of what was going on with COVID. So let's get into the meat of our action plan. The goal of this plan is to focus on people, not just talking about crashes. It's not just traffic. People need to use our transportation system. And, you know, people don't, who don't travel inside of cars they do tend to be disproportionately affected. So this graphic on the right is, is one of the um, data charts from our action plan that shows, you know, most people commute and travel within a car, yet nearly half of the people who are killed on our Columbus streets from 2015 to 2019 were not inside a car. Additionally, as we consider these lives, we've got to recognize equity. That's got to be a foundation of our efforts. We know people living in our communities of interest may have fewer choices about how, when, and where they travel, which can put them at higher risk as they move around. We need to know also where these worst crashes are happening. And with our data, we have found that 65% of our fatal and serious injury crashes happen on just 10% of Columbus streets. So as part of our strategies, we have foundational activities. These are imperative to the success of a Vision Zero plan, any Vision Zero plan. Um, but we're going to continually work to have better information and knowledge of what we do, what we have, how processes work, and more. So data, making sure we refine that data, the infrastructure assets, that's what we have and where it is. And then again, looking at policies and practices and legislation. So then within our strategies, they're grouped by four goals. The first goal, goal pertains to how we design and build streets, sidewalks, bike lanes, crosswalks, and more. This also incorporates uh, changing speed limits and design standards and requirements. The next goal is about education and outreach. By developing an educational campaign, working with our communities and schools, we attend, intend to attack, um, you know, at, or use education towards eliminating fatal and serious injury crashes as well. Um, and then next, you know, this do it better, enhancing processes and collaboration. Um, we'll build on partnerships and work across agencies to influence beyond the engineering and education aspect. And lastly, you know, we need money and we need people to implement all these strategies. So that's a quick summary of the Vision Zero Action Plan that we do have posted on our website currently. Um, you know, but again, this is, this is just the beginning. It's not, here's our plan and you never hear from us, us again. We're going to share our progress and in two years, we're going to continue 
the next installation of our action plan, um, building on our successes and expanding our strategies. You know, as I mentioned, with these working groups, we have hundreds of ideas, and we are really focusing on this first installment, the next two years. Um, you know, we didn't do a bigger, longer five-year plan because we are in a little bit of limbo with COVID. And so we're saying, let's assess, see what we're doing right now, and, and hit it hard in these next two years with these key strategies, uh, and then we'll build upon that in the future. Because again, this pro um, plan is really about prioritizing lives. It's about our friends and our family and prioritizing our safety and our transportation system over all other objectives. So that's just the quick summary of Vision Zero, and I can turn it back to Council President Harden. Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Maria and Mandy, for the presentation. It was a great walkthrough uh, so that we can all understand what Vision Zero is. Uh, one of the things that stood out to me was that um, with good data, we can really zero in on this, that 65% of our fatalities and accidents happen on only 10% of our roadways. Um, and so again, it shows us some, some um, uh, guiding uh, to where we need to focus on uh, in terms of good data to help us move forward. So thank you uh, to the public service team. Also with us this evening are partner agencies who have been engaged in crafting this plan. I'm going to offer them an opportunity to make any remarks if they choose. If they don't have uh, prepared remarks, that is okay as well. Uh, but I, I still have them hopefully at our disposal if we get uh, tough questions or uh, relevant questions that may come in during public testimony. But first, I want to uh, offer uh, Michelle May an opportunity to speak from the Ohio Department of Transportation and Highway Safety Program. Uh, she's the manager. And so, uh, Michelle, would you like to make any comments? Yeah, I don't have any prepared remarks other than to say that um, I think we're very excited as a department to uh, be participating in the Vision Zero initiative for the city of Columbus. Uh, it's something that we've seen in uh, Columbus and Cleveland. I had a discussion about a month ago and dialed in uh, Maria and Mandy uh, with the city of Toledo who's interested in similar type efforts. Uh, and I'd just like to say that I'm excited about the plan because it really connects up with the statewide plan that we have. So we're focused on a lot of the same things, uh, speed management, uh, particularly trying to design our roads uh, with uh, better uh, speed in mind or, or getting better speeds that are good for a community in mind. Um, we're trying to improve a lot of those processes. We're focused on providing more protections to uh, bicyclists and pedestrians and making sure that we're providing more investments uh, in infrastructure that makes it safer for them. And then we're also focused at the statewide level on uh, doing a better job of serving underserved communities, uh, bringing in that equity uh, component to our investments. So uh, over the course of your plan, we're here to provide some expertise and some partnership and uh, potentially some funding as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle, for your uh, support uh, and your engagement on our Vision Zero plan. Um, second, we'll hear from uh, my friend, uh, Mr. William Murdoch, who's the executive director at MORPC and Dr. Kirsten Carr, who is the Director of Planning and Sustainability. I will turn it over to the MORPC team. Thank you, Council Member, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to testify here in support of the Vision Zero Columbus Action Plan. We do have prepared remarks, but they're very short. Uh, again, my name is William Murdoch. I'm the Executive Director at MORPC, and I do have MORPC's Planning Director and uh, Safety Expert, Kir Dr. Kirsten Carr, with me. Uh, you all know that Morpsey is the Regional Council for Central Ohio, and we play an important supporting role in transportation serving communities like Columbus. Uh, Morpsey is the federally designated Metropolitan Planning Organization for Transportation, and that means we do a lot, but a core part of what we do is on safety. And our work supports funding and policies that measurably improve transportation safety and equity, which includes advancing Vision Zero efforts like this at all levels. Uh, we're proud to be partners with the City of Columbus and working toward the goal of zero deaths and uh, injuries by 2035. Uh, together, we look forward to partnering with you to make our roadways safer for everyone who uses them, no matter how. Uh, 
we also know that transportation technology is evolving quickly to improve safety. But as we know, technology can be a double-edged sword. And when we look at the most recent year uh, with data, 2019, there were over 200 fatalities and over 1,200 serious injuries from crashes in central Ohio alone. Many of these were from distracted or unsafe driving. This is devastating for too many families. And that's why reducing uh, distracted driving needs to be a priority. And that's why efforts like Vision Zero are so important and why we so strongly support it. Morphsy also works with local communities to analyze crash data so we can better understand why crashes occur. And we know that real and effective impacts will happen with the adoption of new safety strategies like Vision Zero. Lives will be saved, lives will be saved. And that's why Vision Zero is so important. Uh, as Michelle mentioned, Vision Zero also builds on the state safety plans. It also builds on the region safety plan. And that's why I have Morphsy's expert, Dr. Carr, who can briefly explain. So Dr. Carr, go ahead. Thank you, Thank you William. Um, yeah, Morphsy released the Central Ohio Transportation Safety Plan in September of 2019. This was really the first time that the region has taken a focused look at fatal and serious injury crashes. And we're so proud for the city of Columbus, who was and continues to be a major partner in its implementation. Um, we applaud Columbus for being the first community in our region to adopt Vision Zero and committing to ending traffic fatalities and serious injury. And um, as was talked about throughout this um, testimony already, this commitment comes at a critical time. Over the last year, while traffic volumes were nearly 20% lower, fatal crashes were about 20% higher. Another central public policy goal for Morpsey is to raise awareness of racial and social justice issues. And so we believe that the Vision Zero Action Plan takes a much needed step toward improving the situation by acknowledging that our transportation system must be safe for all and support those most in need, including vulnerable roadways users and communities of interest, people of color, low-income households, and people with disabilities. In Columbus alone, nearly 40% of all traffic deaths occur in these communities. So equitable investment is essential in developing safety systems that protect, protect residents of all backgrounds. And so during a very uncertain time for our state and country, we sincerely appreciate the committee's work and willingness to navigate such an important and critical issue. And we look forward to continuing our work together um, with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, MORPC team. We will do this together as we do uh, many of uh, our big efforts in uh, our region. So look forward to, to being a close partner with you. And before we move to public comment, um, we'll hear from another one of our close partners, um, which is CODA. Uh, we have Andy Vesterville, uh, 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 Senior Director of Capital Projects at CODA, and Corey Francis, who works on Capital Projects at CODA as well. Uh, Andy or Corey, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Council President Harden, uh, panelists and guests. Uh, just briefly, uh, on, on behalf of President Pinkerton and, and CODA, I uh, just want to express CODA's excitement to be a part of Vision Zero um, and our, uh, our, our wholehearted embrace of working together to make uh, transportation safer in Central Ohio. Uh, our, our vision at CODA is to move every life forward, and uh, you know, the first step of that is to get people where they are going safely. So that's uh, absolutely foundational for us. And we're excited to be already working on some of these action steps that are that are detailed and laid out here in the plan. Uh, so in partnership with the city of Columbus, um, with uh, Franklin County and Morpsey and ODOT and others, uh, we're already working on making revisions to our transit uh, stop design guide and working to make those transit stops safer and uh, incorporating safety messaging and communications uh, onto some of our busiest routes in, in our transit operation. And that's guided by data uh, from this Vision Zero uh, effort. So uh, again, just happy to be a part of it. Um, and CODA looks forward to doing whatever we can uh, to advance this effort. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, sir.
I was waiting to see if Corey had anything to, to say. Maybe he'll just uh, pitch, uh, help clean up if we have some tough testimony or hard questions. Um, well, thank you all for the work on this project. It is critically important to our community, um, our region. I'm really excited that we continue to lift up equity uh, as we move through uh, Vision Zero. Our Vision Zero plan as well. Um, next, we will have public testimony. And all speakers will have three minutes. If all speakers would start by saying your name and if you represent any organizations, uh, we are going to go straight into it. Looks like we have um, nine speakers that have signed up to be a part of this evening's hearing. Uh, Miss Angie, the first person that I see is uh, Teresa Pol Policino from Ohio Health. Hello, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Teresa Policino. I am a senior consultant for trauma with Ohio Health. My focus is on injury prevention, and I have been helping with Vision Zero um, with the small group meetings. Um, Ohio Health Trauma is very excited to be part of this. Um, as a nurse working in the ER at Grant for almost 15 years, I've seen firsthand um, the results of these crashes, of the pedestrians being struck, um, and it has a huge impact on their lives as well as the healthcare workers taking care of them. So we are happy to help out in any way we can. Um, I'm also involved with Impact Team Driver and pre-COVID was very involved in getting out to the schools and talking to students about distracted driving and being a safe passenger. So hopefully we'll be resuming that in the near future, but um, anything Ohio Health can do, we're happy to help. And thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And thank you for lending that perspective from our healthcare workers. Um, again, at the end of the day, this is about keeping folks alive. Um, and uh, thank you for bringing that perspective. Uh, the next speaker that we have coming for before council is uh, Ginger Torres. Ginger Torres is not in attendance. Okay. Uh, the next speaker I have on my list is Josh Lapp. I do not see Josh Slap in attendance either, sir. My apologies. Man, Josh is slipping. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, uh, Josh Lap is from Transit Columbus. Uh, the next speaker is Aaron Sink from Yay Bikes. Aaron? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you, Aaron. I oh, thought man. I could. Yeah. Actually, Aaron, is there any way you could turn up your, your volume? We, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Is that any better? Uh, we will make it work. Let's go. With that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you uh, for your time this evening. It's wonderful to see all of you. I am Erin Sink. I am the vice chair of Yay Bikes, and I'm happy to be here speaking on behalf of our members. I first want to uh, commend the city of Columbus for embarking on this Vision Zero initiative. Uh, to rethink how Columbus approaches transportation planning and the prioritization of our vulnerable road users, such as bicyclists, bicyclists. Um, eliminating traffic deaths and improving the experience for cyclists and pedestrians is a laudable goal that Yay Bikes fully supports. Our mission at Yay Bikes is to help people ride bikes in the conditions that can exist today and to improve the conditions that will exist tomorrow. We know in central Ohio, roughly 60% of people are interested in making some trip by bike that they're currently making by car. These bike curious folks often cite some barrier as the reason they're not riding. Most common, they don't believe that the route or streets they'd have to ride are safe and comfortable to travel by bike. And so it is our hope that Vision Zero Columbus will reshape our streets to be safer for bicyclists and encourage more people to make that trip by bike. Uh, we've seen many cities use Vision Zero as a catalyst for, for driving dramatic change to their infrastructure to make their cities more walkable and more bike friendly. Like Seattle and Louisville have 
to use the Vision Zero initiatives to install miles of protected bike lanes, improve sidewalks, and enhance transit stops, all to improve safety and advance mobility for citizens. Personally, I'm very interested um, in the redesign of the city's road management standards. Um, as was mentioned earlier, focus on moving motor vehicles, um, often putting safety and comfort uh, secondary. This can lead to streets that just simply aren't as safe as they could be for human beings. So updating these manuals and advertising people will absolutely save lives while simultaneously making Columbus a more vibrant city and these will events for years to come. So Yipike strongly supports uh, Columbus in this initiative. So finally, we encourage that will be challenging to meet but if we meet them, they'll move our city forward in profound ways. So uh, thank you very much uh, for the time. Uh, I really believe that by working together, this initiative is the beginning of a transformational journey for Columbus. And we at EA Bikes look forward to our continued partnership with the city of Columbus to improve mobility in the region. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you for all the advocacy of Yay Bikes and keeping uh, all of our pedestrians um, safe, regardless if they're walking or on two wheels or four wheels. Um, we all have to do this together, and so I appreciate your advocacy. Uh, next uh, speaker we have is Bob Suter. Uh, is Bob Suter with us? Yes, can you hear me? Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bob Suter. I'm co-owner of uh, Wolf's Ridge Brewing, a restaurant brewery downtown. Um, I just want to come on and, and say thank you for taking on this initiative. Uh, you know, we've been downtown for uh, about eight years now. Uh, and over that period, we've seen our fair share of accidents in, in front of our building on 4th Street, um, some, some fairly serious. Uh, and uh, it has definitely impacted uh, our ability to operate as a business. Uh, you know, obviously the the focus on lives here, I think, is is absolutely you know the the top priority. And we've seen staff uh, riding bikes to and from work uh, be hit by cars. Uh, we had an individual walking to work that was hit by a, a a tire from a car that was going very fast um, uh, downtown. So this this is something I think that is really important, not only to the public safety aspect, which again is is paramount, but uh, beyond that, I think has a bigger impact on our city's ability to, you know, uh, be a really be a leader for, you know, uh, public safety and, and uh, economic activity downtown. Uh, tourists coming in, you know, walking from the convention center uh, or walking from hotels, things like that, uh, I think want to leave their cars aside and really experience the city. So this, you know, from our perspective, would be a huge step forward in allowing, uh, you know, more fluid traffic from from people visiting uh, outside of central Ohio. Uh, but, you know, it, I think it'll do a lot for the city. And I, I definitely second the representative from Yay Bikes on what they said, uh, which is, you know, if we if we do this, I think it'll help elevate our city standing. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in full, so excuse me, full support of it. So thank you. Bob, I appreciate your um, perspective as a small business owner in a downtown small business um, uh, and bringing in the tourist uh, uh, component, uh, making sure that they feel safe as well. It is about uh, safety and it is about uh, keeping folks alive, but it's also about having a thriving um, uh, uh, area where people uh, want to be and feel safe to be. So thank you. Uh, uh, for for your perspective for this evening. Uh, the next speaker to come before council is David Roseman. All right, are we? Everybody got their ears on. Can you hear me? All right. You are live, Mr. Roseman. Welcome back. Okay. To council. Uh, thank you very much. All right, we can start the clock now, or I'll take up the other minutes that the folks that didn't show up can speak for. Uh, anyway, hello, Council Member, uh, President Hardin, uh, Associate City Staff, Distinguished Guests. I am David Roseman, a Columbus Northland resident for over 40 years. I last spoke to uh, this uh, Columbus Transportation Committee chaired by Council Member Favor uh, in July 2019. Uh, as you might all know, I'm bicycling, pedestrian, active transportation advocate, volunteer activist. I've routinely participated with past Columbus transportation initiatives, 
and other community-based active transportation related groups. Uh, FYI, I am a bicycling crash victim struck by a motorist in downtown Columbus Roadway where the driver was sighted and I was hospitalized at Grant with multiple broken leg bones. While I support and I'm thankful for the overall Vision Zero Columbus proposed plan and wonderful intentions, I'm compelled to submit my comments, challenges, and questions about some possible omissions, which the Vision Zero Action Plan strategy uh, and Columbus should specifically address, adopt, legislate, and or fund. So here's my eight quick items. Uh, Columbus should implement an actual complete streets policy and related code. Despite what's been publicized, there's still only a complete streets proclamation by city council remaining from 2008. Uh, complete streets policy states that all transportation projects will address the needs of all roadway users. Although though Columbus joined NATCO, the National Association of City Transportation Officials, in 2008, 2018 and does consult the NAT code design guides, but still our city still needs to formally adopt the complete streets policy. Just as a reminder, NAT code's policy platform urges cities to adopt both Vision Zero and complete streets. I, I continue to applaud Morpsey for their excellent complete streets policy mandate, which has been on the books for quite some time. Uh, number two, uh, please reestablish the pedestrian bicycling committees that were both unduly eliminated by DPS. Such collaboration created transparency and open communication with us public. Lower the speed limits. Number three, please lower the speed limits besides downtown to all residential neighborhoods at 25 miles an hour. Number four, I see only $4 million on the plan. That's not much different from the annual CIBs. Where's some bold proposed capital budget funding action dedicated to retrofit public pedestrian sidewalks for missing? How can we increase by, say, tenfold for so much needed required catch up? Columbus total sidewalk infrastructure gaps are about 50% citywide. No matter what the speed, if you're walking on a roadway and you get hit, or I get hit, um, it's gonna hurt you. Number five, please develop a renewed comprehensive master bikeway plan and fund its implementation. That old plan is probably at least 10 years old. It was gonna be part of Connect Columbus, which got shelved, and we have no idea where that plan is, and we need a new plan sooner than later. Number six, Please have Department of Public Services proactively coordinate with Recreation and Parks to build local street pathway connectors with greenway trails to facilitate community and business easy access. Number seven, increase funding for targeted police enforcement focused on motorist distracted driving texting at identified pedestrian hazard street intersections, sidewalks, etc. And Finally, number eight, have Columbus Department of Public Utilities Stormwater Manual provide variances for DPS to allow roadway shoulder enhancements to build bike pet accommodations. Because right now, DPS's present burdensome policy is adding significant DPS construction costs and curtailing opportunities to add more bikeways, sidewalks, et cetera. Uh, thank you very much for addressing these concerns and to re-engage some past priorities to achieve the goals of Vision Zero Columbus sooner than later. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. a little bit? Yeah, I was gonna ask you or Mandy to uh, to jump in there. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get start and started, and if I miss anything, Mandy will chime in, but thank you, David, for um, you know responding and, and having such a great interest in our action plan, and I know you emailed me many of these points, and so um, you know I have them in mind. Um, I will say, you know, many of these very topics were part of that discussion with our working groups over the course of a year and, you know, lots of great ideas here and, and yeah, we we definitely want to be able to do more and that's why this is just the start of our, you know, our first action plan and some of this stuff will be incorporated inherently with many of our partnerships with MORPC and ODOT and more. Um, you know, 
to, to begin with speaking to the funding, we have an existing pot of money of, of $4 million that goes towards pedestrian improvements. But with Vision Zero in our action plan strategies, we are dedicating additional funding directly to um, Vision Zero projects. But really, now that we are incorporating Vision Zero in everything that we do, particularly in public service with infrastructure, it's going to be part of everything that we do when we, as we, we develop scopes, as we look at resurfacing projects, we'll see, you know, that will be looked at as what are the Vision Zero opportunities here. So while it might not specifically look like there's this big dollar sign coming out at you from, from an, the initial plan, this will be within the um, foundation of, of everything that we're doing towards our projects from now on with, with the City of Columbus Department of Public Service. Um, Mandy, did I miss anything? I just want to reemphasize what you're saying. Um, we really focused on, you know, uh, smart goals, so specific, measurable, achievable, um, relevant, and time-based goals, and that's really what our action items focus on. And I think, as Maria shared, it's the foundational items that we also are working to uh, integrate into our processes and our policies as we deliver the Department of Public Service program as a whole. Thank you, uh, Mandy and Maria, and thank you, Mr. Roseman. We appreciate your advocacy. You are close to us. Um, I remember when I was chair of public service, uh, I miss those days and uh, our long conversation and engagement, but we really do appreciate um, uh, your advocacy. Uh, the next speaker to come before council is Dustin Holfinger. Hi, good evening, Mr. President. Can you hear me okay? I can. Welcome back to council. Excellent. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, members of the Columbus City Council, working group members. Uh, I'm State Government Relations Director for the American Heart Association and appreciate the chance to weigh in tonight. I believe we can all agree uh, that people who walk, roll, run, bike, drive, or ride a bus uh, deserve safe and equitable modes of transportation and the ability to enjoy roads and paths that are designed for safe travel. The American Heart Association appre appreciates the work and the commitment to the Vision Zero plan presented this evening and wants to work with the council and the administration to make it safe for people to share the road with cars and trucks. Sidewalks that connect to parks, public transportation, and schools, roads that include designated and protected bike lanes, and streets that accommodate all people can help us safely be active and improve our quality of life. We regularly work nationally to make sure our communities fund these important initiatives and are pleased to see this focus here in Central Ohio as well. In particular, we need to focus on the many communities with low income and communities of color that have lacked well-maintained routes to parks and schools, roads, bike lanes, sidewalks for decades. In many cases, they simply don't have the transportation options at all. These same neighborhoods often experience higher rates of chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. To make up for the lost years of opportunities, we need to take this opportunity now. These kinds of safety improvements to our streets will improve more opportunities, will provide more opportunities for people to be physically active as a part of their daily routines. Engaging in the daily physical activity and living in a walkable community can help reduce that risk of heart disease and stroke, hypertension, diabetes, and some types of cancer. At a time when 75% of our teens do not get enough physical activity, I'm sure that goes for some adults as well, this is something we can all get behind. As this council knows, well-designed streets are safe, people-friendly, and support good health by making it easier and safer for people to be physically active while going around town. Healthy and safe street designs offer many benefits, including fewer crashes and traffic injuries, improved visibility of people walking and cycling, improved air quality, improved friendliness of the street environment for walking, cycling, shopping, waiting for the bus, chatting with neighbors or tourists, like was mentioned earlier, improved connectivity amongst neighbors, increased visibility for those local business owners. The efforts of Columbus City Council, Mayor Ginther and others through this Vision Zero plan are clearly focused on making this city and its neighborhoods more livable by ensuring all people get safely to where they need to go, whether that be work, school, the library, grocery store, or parks. The American Heart Association encourages the city, however, to use the guiding principles found in this plan to develop and, adopt, develop and adopt an official ongoing complete streets ordinance 
that will ensure safety and equity for the future economic growth in the city of Columbus. I appreciate your time tonight. And thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And thank you to the American Heart Association for uh, being a part of tonight's uh, hearing. Uh, the next speaker to come before council is Jean Kl uh, Klinger. Um, thank you. Hi. Um, greetings to the council and council president. And um, I appreciate. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Um, I'm a long time, uh, over 17 years resident of Highland West, and um, I chose this community intentionally after living in Grandview um, because I I loved just everything that was going on over here and the diversity. But I found upon moving that there just wasn't the um, attention to transportation, either walking or biking or driving. And so I've seen, um, I lost a neighbor a block down. Um, she was handicapped and she had a handicapped uh, vehicle. And because I live on Wheatland, North Wheatland, it's an entry portal to Highland West and people go as fast as 60 miles an hour headed um, north on my street. And they flipped their car and slid into her handicapped vehicle and destroyed it. And she ended up having to leave her home. She didn't have the money to replace that vehicle. She wasn't able to go anywhere. It was a, tra a neighborhood tragedy. Um, and then one block over on Oakley, uh, a neighbor who had his three-year-old granddaughter playing peekaboo in front of his bumper, it's parked pretty closely on both sides. She was clipped by a truck and flipped over the vehicle in the air, three years old, and the truck just kept driving. We have very high speeds, rates of speed on interior streets. And then um, most recently is a center turn lane was installed on West Broadway. And so there've been a number of head on crashes, particularly at North Wheatland and West Broad, because if you get in the lane to turn north onto Wheatland, you have cars approaching that are trying to turn south. Um, and so I've come home to try to go down my street and I can't because there's, you know, two ambulances there. So people have been severely hurt. Um, and the other thing um, I really can relate to the uh, common comment about sidewalks because we've got lots of moms with, um, you know, babies and sometimes toddlers in strollers and they're going on the streets because we haven't got the sidewalks like steel. The city was seriously looking at putting sidewalks in there three or four years ago and it just did not happen. And so we've we've got a lot of traffic that way. Um, so I, I, I we've and and Highland I, I also participate in the Highland West Civic Association and I know we've brought this up because the streets uh, you know don't coincide. You have the south, you know, coming it, north, you've got Wheatland where it's one way, then it's two way. And now because we have a home for the aged at the end of North Wheatland, we've got people turning out of there and no kidding, going 40 to 50 miles an hour the wrong way, all, all the way to West Broad. So that's gonna be a dire accident when that happens. We've got the ongoing crashes right at North Wheatland and Broad. so. We've asked for speed bumps, but North Wheatland is a um, emergency vehicle pathway for fire. So it's it's just, I think I would love to see four-way stops. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You, I was gonna say, if you had any uh, last last finish it up. Oh, um, I, yeah, oh, thank you. Um, I would love to see four-way stops like you see in other sectors, like in Clintonville. Uh, I'd like to see speed bumps on roads that are not fire and emergency truck. I have a neighbor who's a fireman and I understand why we cannot, you know, North Wheatland is a fire passageway. Um, but I, th I think sidewalks down steel, four-way stops and, and 
just so, changing the speed limits because I go into other sectors of the city. Like when I lived in Grandview, I actually biked there because I felt safe. It, I can't even get to the bike path here. It's just not safe. If we could just interior streets, 25, West Broad, no more than 35. That would be a huge help for business for safety it would lower deaths this three-year-old that was flipped over the trucks with her grandpa watching she lived that was a miracle so i just thank you for all your attention to this i really and then lastly i saw a german tourist actually hit by a car in downtown on west broad she was legally crossing and a car turned into her and we all raced over to help her and she was from germany visiting so it, it's something that would make our city so attractive and so it already is, but it would make yeah. it really attractive. It would, I think it could double our input from people coming in, walking, going to businesses, growing businesses. Well, th thank, thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank no, you thank so you much. for your, your, um, your testimony. Would you like somebody to follow up? I think we might have your contact uh, through the speaker slip. Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll ask someone from public service or from uh, Maria, would you? Point. I'd be happy to follow up and uh, Jean, I encourage you to look at some of those strategies um, uh, in our action plan. There is a slow streets initiative happening in the Hilltop area that will kind of take a look at some options for managing speeds in that neighborhood um, where that's coming. Um, I believe there may even be a sidewalk program coming on, on Wheatland if, if Mandy's quick research <laughs> was correct. And also, you know, we are aware that Broad Street is on our high injury network. Lots and lots of crashes happening on Broad Street. So yeah, um, that's you know. part of our, our consideration and understanding as well. Um, and then beyond that, you know, we have ODOT here today, but we are partnering with ODOT to look at um, some of the, the opportunities to manage the limits to that w would make better sense um, for our, our city streets. Um, our speed limits are controlled by the state legislation, but we can study them and we are actively participating um, in looking at that process with ODOT currently. But I'd be happy to follow up with you further um, after today. Yeah, I think I think enforcement, like interior streets are 25 miles an hour, but we have people going down at 60. It's been a big issue this year, just in general. And yeah. I know that we, we've all um, noticed it. Uh, I live in a high capacity street. I live on Long Street on the east side and uh, it, it is an, it's an issue. And so we look forward to following up, Jean, and thank you again for your, your testimony. Uh, the last speaker we have before council is Marion Lupo. I'm sorry, sir, Marion Lupo is not in attendance. All righty. Um, I think Ginger Ginger might be back now. She we called on her earlier, but I see her on the attendee list. That's awesome. We want to give her a chance. Yes, Ginger is available at this time. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, Maria. Sir, did you want to call on Ginger at this please, time? Please, please. And if we had any others that we that weren't here earlier, we'll take them too. Absolutely, Ginger. Hello. Hello, Ginger. Welcome to Council. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, for having me or uh, asking me to, to speak again because uh, I was trying to sign in earlier. <laughs> this is the first time I've done this on my iPad. So thank you. Uh, um, but anyway, I want to say, uh, Councilman Harden, we've come full circle since you were one of the first ones to sign our Vision Zero petition a few years ago. <laughs> So we thank you for your ongoing support. <laughs> anyway, my name is Ginger Tornas. I with Friends and Families for Safe Streets Columbus. And I would like to share my gratitude, gratitude to the entire Columbus City Council for adopting Vision Zero and to Councilman Favor and staff for shepherding it through, shepherding it through. Also, a big thank you to Maria Cantrell and the Vision Zero Task Force, as well as everyone involved with Friends and Families for Straight, Safe Streets Columbus, whose tireless work helped make this real. It's been almost four years since our friend, vibrant legacy marathon runner, educator, 
and mother of four, Linda Evans, life was snuffed out. She was killed and left to die by a hit and run driver while she was out for a morning jog. Unfortunately, the road she was on had no sidewalks. That was so unbelievably heartbreaking to know your loved one's life could have been saved as well as countless others. Had different policy and engineering decisions been made with a focus on safe and human centered design. Had this been the case with Linda, she may still very well be with us today. So here we are finally, thankfully, implementing the Vision Zero Action Plan in the city of Columbus. This action plan is a well-researched, comprehensive document, but if and only if implemented and funded properly, will it dramatically reduce traffic crashes and eliminate loss of life and serious injuries on our streets, roads, and highways. This is our critically important moral imperative. Thank you all. Thank you, Ginger. That, no, that, that was a way to end uh, our, our testimony. It brings it right back to what we started this uh, saying. This is about people, it's about lives. Um, it's about our residents, and so uh, thank you so much. Uh, you do remind me that um, uh, I guess it was about four years ago, the last time I was public service chair, uh, and we did start this conversation, and, and it was your advocacy uh, back then, um, as well as Director uh, Gallagher, truthfully, has been talking about this for, for several years, and so I'm just very grateful that we've gotten to a place that our community can uh, create this uh, action plan and move forward with it now. Um, I, I do want to thank everyone in the Department of Public Service. Um, I do miss being chair. Uh, you've, I've said it three times now. I'm so grateful for um, uh, Councilmember Favor, Chair Favor, who's allowed me to stand in for her today and she couldn't make it uh, and, uh, and, and play a chair again of uh, my favorite department. Um, I also want to thank her staff, uh, Ty Harton, and uh, uh, Aniso uh, Luban uh, for their help. Uh, my team uh, in CTV uh, and Miss Angela. Um, again, thank you to Mandy and Maria, to all of our partners. Um, uh, thank you for being along the ride with us. Uh, we're, like we said, we do everything together in our community. And so that will be the same with this plan as well. Um, I know that I personally am excited to see our city move towards a safer transportation system. Council will vote on this plan this coming Monday, March 8th, at our regularly scheduled meeting. Um, and I, I would also shout out, because I just saw, I saw this earlier today on social media, uh, that Columbus City Schools is advocating uh, in support of this plan as well. We gotta think about those safe routes to school as well. Um, so again, this is the community coming together. Uh, for an initiative that we believe will save lives over the years. So thank you all for being a part of this hearing, and that will conclude uh, tonight's public uh, service hearing.